I just hope they like it, enjoy it. I hope they smile when they hear it. You know, it's just, um, it's, it's a side of the band that's always been present. We've just tried to take it up to a level which we wanted to kind of shock and awe. That was kind of an expression we used in the studio. Like we want to shock and awe, you know? We want to come out swinging. We want to show people exactly what we're about when we're in this mood, you know? Because like I said, these things are snapshots. Like in a year's time, who knows what we might be writing. Um, and yeah, we, ju we, just, we just wanted to show off, I think. I think, that, I think that was it. Shock and awe and show off. Hello, my name is Ali Shuttler and I'm here with Matt Tuck from Bullet For My Valentine for the latest in Enemies In Conversation series. Hey Matt, how are things? Yeah, good, thank you. Doing pretty well. Got a little bit of a cold right now, but apart from that, pretty good. Amazing, yeah. Um, You recently released your self-titled seventh album. I mean, how are you kind of feeling about this era of the band? Yeah, I'm really stoked, man. You know, it was, um, it was a weird year last year to make and record a record, as it has been for everyone across the world who's trying to get on with things, you know, so it was a little disruptive. It was a little unusual. Um, but now looking back, it was, um, it was actually uh, a pretty productive, creative, successful experience. We just kind of made the most of it. We just knuckled down. Uh, we really focused on making the best album we could possibly make. And um, yeah, and dis despite the disruption and the, the chaos that was going on everywhere else, we kind of managed to, um, you know, bubble in our own little world for for like six to eight months and, and get the job done which was really good so yeah we're, we're really proud man we're really, really really proud of it amazing yeah i mean apart from kind of the logistics of kind of actually getting in the room together like how did the pandemic kind of affect the record do you think um honestly it, it didn't affect it at all like 2020 for us we were one of the lucky ones we'd already kind of decided that 2020 was no touring it was no shows it was no promo it was focused on writing recording and finishing this record so we were one of the lucky ones we made a start on it pre-pandemic at the end of 2019 um so we already had the ball rolling we knew the direction and the sound which is kind of the hardest part of making a record is, is finding that finding that direction you know so you know luckily we uh, we already had that and um yeah so, so you know the, the only thing like you said was it was just a disruptive about being in a room together being able to write as a collective um apart from that we just like i said we just cracked on man we just made the most of it it was you know between march and june july not a lot happened um, as a group anyway. Individually, we were writing and I was going up to our producer's place, bubbling up with his family um, and making start on the vocal writing and demoing up the, the songs that we hadn't finished and stuff like that. And um, yeah, and as soon as the summer rolled around and the restrictions eased, we kind of kind of regathered the troops, got down to Wales and, um, and, and finished off the process really. And then as soon as we were happy with what we had, we started recording, I think it was end of October, and we finished it at the end of January. Um, you know, now it's, it's been out for a couple of weeks, you've been out on the road with it, like, what's the reaction been like? It's been great, man. I mean, like, it, it's it's not something the band really pays attention to, is kind of like the public opinion, or, or even like critics' opinion. You know, we, we've just always kind of done what we've done, and we're, we're always comfortable working that way, you know what I mean? So I haven't really kind of involved myself too much about reading reviews and going online, and you know, reading, you know, it's just, it's just not how I roll anymore. Um, but from what I've heard from management and the rest of the guys that do kind of like to still kind of read that kind of stuff, it's been very well received. The only thing I can go off of is the reaction of the live shows, which yeah. recently did, you know, so that, that's my biggest gauge of, of, of how people are reacting. Cause that's kind of the people that are important to us is how they're reacting is at, at our shows, you know what I mean? And yeah, it's been, been great. It's been really good. You know, the, the, the album is, it's full of attitude and energy, you know, and that just comes across in the live show from from the from the crowd as well. You know, they're just, I think after the year and a half everyone's had, if you're a Bullet fan, having new music, being at a show again, all these little kind of stars aligning at the, at the right point for us were um, have been great, and the, the reaction has been phenomenal. Really, really super stoked. I mean, how were those shows? They were good. They were good. There was a couple that were quieter than we hoped. Uh, I think there's still a lot of hesitancy in the market for with, with COVID and all that stuff. And, but apart from that, they were they were they were excellent. It was good to get back on the stage. It was good to finally have something to focus towards after writing the record and recording the record. Because after that was done, obviously there was nothing again, as there mm -hmm. always is in a, in a cycle, you know. So it was good to get in a room, rehearse all the new stuff, get back on a stage, and just give people a dose of twenty twenty one bullet. You know what I mean? So it was great. Loved it. Loved every second of it. 
Um, there were there were a few kind of nerves, um, a little bit more than usual, but I just think that's kind of time off the stage. But you know, as soon as we got the first one, one or two shows underway, yeah, we were on fire. Like Manchester, London, and Cardiff, especially those three were phenomenal shows. So. Incredible. I mean, were they emotional? Was it kind of emotional? Kind of get back on stage and kind of mm. be there with your fan base and stuff again after what well, must be close to two years of kind of not yeah. a lot. Well, we, we had we, we were one of the fortunate ones. We had a taste of live live music again in June when we had like the download pilot fest thing. So that one was definitely an emotional experience. It really, that, I think that kind of that show had that moment for us, you know, because um, at the time as well, live music, you know, still wasn't back, still wasn't a thing, you know. So we were, you know, we were very much aware of how important that festival was for us on a personal level, but as you know, for for live music and the industry in itself, you know. So seeing everybody get in a field again and just being being as one and, and and singing along to songs for us and to every other band that were there that weekend was was a phenomenal experience you know it's like it, it's it's a huge part of people's lives is, is live music events you know especially for us as musicians and all our crew and the infrastructure which you know relies on live music to, to make a career in, in this country but um you know seeing like ten thousand people out there just kind of losing their minds and having that unity again was was a beautiful thing and it, it was it was quite emotional it was quite an emotional event and as for the tour like was it different like were there many was it different to how the, your tours normally are like in terms of covid restrictions and that sort of stuff like, we, we had some basic stuff we weren't we weren't basically going out like all the bands on tour we were hanging out um okay. and stuff like that so it wasn't anything anything um wasn't any crazy rules or anything it was just it was just kind of just be mindful that you know that the success of this tour relies on everyone being sensible you know and i think we've had a, a long enough period of time now to get used to kind of what sensible means like mask wearing sanitizing hands not mixing with too many people in social situations if you don't have to that kind of stuff so so yeah so it was all good there was just unfortunately on the last day of the tour in brighton we found out that i think it was one of the tesseract crew members tested positive so they they didn't get to play the final show with us in brighton uh, which was which was a shame so but apart from that yeah it was it was it was plain sailing it was all good and in terms of the crowd like were they as up for it as you thought they would be yes yes and no there there was a couple of shows where you know you had to kind of i don't know encourage people to kind of relax you know what i mean but for, for some people it might have been their first time out in a, a social public event for nearly two years so you know it's just understandable why some people were still hesitant to maybe not know what to do, but kind of just let their guard down and, and just just have fun, you know what I mean? And just have a little taste of normality. Um, but overall, it was fantastic. It was business as usual, mosh pits, crowd surfing, circle pits, chaos singing. So it was great. It was really good fun. Lovely stuff. Um, so this record kind of been described as like the beginning of Bullet 2.0. Mm -hmm. Like, does it feel like the start of a new chapter for you guys? Yeah, I think in many ways it does. I, I think I think creatively, the, the the band is just on a on, on kind of a new level right now. It's it's something that was becoming apparent in 2019 when we started the writing process. Uh, all during the touring cycle of Gravity, we we, we felt that we were becoming quite a, a formidable live act, uh, which is something we're extremely proud of. And um, yeah, I just think the writing process for the new record was um, it was it was relentless. We we just couldn't stop, like writing songs and we couldn't stop it and it just it just didn't stop it's difficult to explain apart from it just didn't stop <laughs> which is great having that creative flow is something that you kind of you crave for when writing a song let alone an album um and as soon as we kind of knocked one song on the head and went on to the next one regardless if it was like a vocal idea or a guitar riff or a groove or something you know we kind of got heads down and um yeah it just it just didn't stop and even after the album was finished we continued writing and we've got a bunch of another six songs plus the b-sides that we haven't released yet to do something with at some point in this year well not this year because this year's done now but 2022 you know and yeah so we finally switched off the, the songwriting kind of side of the band right now because i think we've kind of we've taken it really really far but i think it's good to kind of have a bit of a bit of a breather now so and just focus on on touring for a little bit definitely yeah because i think it's rare for like a band to kind of do you know the self-titled album the kind of the new chapter like seven albums into their career mm -hmm. like did you feel like you needed that fresh start or to kind of like reintroduce yourself to people 
I, no, I didn't feel like we needed it. It just, it was just kind of the vibe between the four of us. It was kind of how well the writing process was going, how ferocious the songs were coming out, the quality of this, you know, for me, I think the quality of the songwriting is phenomenal. You know, the way this, the way the songs are structured, they're brave, they're fierce, they're confident. And it, it's just something that we felt we, we didn't have, especially on Gravity, you know, Gravity was a very different album to write and make yeah. for lots of different reasons. So it was nice for, for the three other guys to kind of, and myself to really feel unified again and not fractured like because of stylistic differences and stuff like that my dog's going mental what's up bud <laughs> what's going on um yeah so so i don't know and everything just kind of started to fall into place and it just it just felt like everyone was comfortable again it felt like everyone was confident and yeah and i just think you know we were so happy with the way the demos were coming out and we knew we were onto something we think something very special and something which really marks a significant period of time for Bullet My Valentine, you know, so that's kind of where we went down the, the self-titled route. It just feels like it, it, it is, this is the beginning of something and everyone is uh, super excited and motivated as, they, as they've ever been, you know, so it's, uh, yeah, it's an important record for us in many, many ways. And I think it won't really kind of, I don't know, click in our heads how important probably until this cycle is actually done. You know, it, it, you only really see kind of what a cycle and an album means when you're done with it in a way you know so we're just going to kind of um get on tour next year restrictions allowing you know, we've got a european tour on sale but you know we're, we're not really kind of getting too excited about that at the minute because we don't think it's going to happen unfortunately but um all we can do is focus on 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 what's coming up and and just kind of yeah and just fingers crossed that everything works out because uh, you know for a touring band right now the world is still a, a very uncertain place so we'll, we'll see how it goes yeah i mean how much of this record kind of was a reaction to gravity and like how that was received because i know like i really enjoyed what you did in that record but i know it definitely split opinion mm. yeah honestly there, there, there was no reaction there, the, you know the, the album wasn't a reaction of it at all it was it yeah. was just the album just is what it is on this one it was what it was on gravity it was just where the band was at it was where my head was at as a songwriter um and yeah they they, they, they couldn't be more different in many in many ways but I don't think this album would be what it is if it wasn't for Gravity. Put it that way. It wasn't a reactionary album, but I, I, I think I think the I think we needed to make that album to kind of give us the platform to be able to come back swinging as hard as we have on this one. And I, th I don't think it would have worked. And otherwise, this is again a difficult one to explain. Yeah. But um, I, th I think we, you know, Gravity for me is is. I think this new one and Gravity are my two favorite records that I've ever been involved with in this band. I think they're phenomenal in their own way. Um, and I'm really, really pleased that people from what I'm hearing now is doing lots of press like this over the last kind of three, four months or whatever. Like Gravity now seems to, three years later, have bedded in and people understand what it is. And it's not reactionary from that side of view, not from my point of view, you know? And um, yeah, I think what that album did was take people by surprise um they didn't ex didn't see it come in but i think now the dust has settled and you can just listen to it for what it is i think people understand it and appreciate it a lot more than they did when it came out when they first heard it you know so yeah. um yeah it's an album i wouldn't change it for the world I, I love that record i'm extremely proud of it and in its own way it is it was the start of almost the process of this new record anyways you know and it's just yeah. just just a moment in time that i had to get out of my system you know yeah did it feel like you need to kind of scratch that i guess poppier itch or like the more electronic yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't to scratch a popular itch i just didn't have the energy and the appetite for writing technical metal music at that point in my career and in, in, in my personal i just wasn't there you know we did try and the more we forced it the more i kind of got pissed off with it and it was more rejecting it it, it was just a, just a weird time for me as a songwriter a weird time for me in my personal life and it was something that i kind of dug my heels in to kind of not document it but then as soon as I did, I, I, I kind of got excited again. Yeah. And that's what that album is. It's just a moment in time for me as a songwriter, you know? And um, yeah, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just glad I did it. We could have written another metal record if we'd really wanted to during that period, but it just wasn't, it just wasn't in my heart. I just didn't want to do it. And I think doing anything like that for the wrong reasons is just, it's just bullshit, isn't it? Like yeah. you, you shouldn't, and, and being a creative, you can't, you shouldn't have to feel you should be kind of, your art should be to please people other than yourself, you know, and that, that's kind of where I was at. And this time around, 
it's been exactly the same process. It's just the execution of it is a far more ferocious technical side of Bullet Point Valentine, you know? Yeah. Do you kind of feel like these two records have kind of reminded you that that's kind of why you do music? Like to kind of please yeah. yourself with other people? Yeah, like I'm having these two albums back to back now, I've got such a, a confidence to kind of be who I want to be as a songwriter and as a musician and all that stuff. And, you know, it, it's kind of proven to me that staying true to myself, regardless of what people think or say, it makes me content. It makes me happy and proud, you know, and I know I've stuck to my guns and nothing really bad has happened because of that, you know, that we had a really successful, amazing global touring cycle of gravity <clears throat> and actually elevated us to new levels in a lot of different territories, you know, and it was something when the album first came out, we thought, damn, maybe it's the kind of, I don't know, not the beginning of the end, but it's like, man, maybe we've kind of, uh, even though I've stuck to my guns and I've done what I wanted, maybe we've done some damage here. But as the touring cycle panned out, it, it turned out to be the opposite, you know? So it's just, been a, it's just been a great learning curve for me to just kind of always, you know, just be true to who I am as a songwriter. And, and it, you know, having a career as long as we've had and a fan base that we have, we know we're going to ruffle feathers, every, album to album, song to song. You can't please everyone. And I think, you know, even down like 15, 16 years, seven albums down the line, I'm still kind of, learning all these things about myself about my bandmates about live music about writing songs and yeah i think and that excites me it just goes to show there's always more to learn and you know i've always got more to give and um yeah who knows what the next album will be like i think we've uh, got kind of i don't know we've opened the door to do whatever we want now i think stylistically you know i don't think people will be surprised anymore um did you have a vision for this record going in did you kind of know what you wanted I think everyone naturally wanted to, for it to be a heavy record off the back of Gravity. We, we wanted to kind of, you know, get back to that more traditional sound. We, we, weren't, we weren't writing that way, but I kind of thought that's what the boys were thinking. And in my head, the natural kind of next chapter was, was to go, you know, heavy and super heavy. Um, we didn't get there for months and months and months of writing from like, June 2019 to November 2019, we wrote loads and loads of songs. We, we used our down, downtime wisely. Um, and it took until about early November for us to hit on this on, on the sound that we wanted to go for. So that whole process was, was just writing songs that we always have. Everything sounded pretty good, but there was nothing which really had that, that spark and that X factor, which really kind of made everyone's ears pay attention. Um, and that was when we finally wrote Knives. And then every, all the songs that came before that, I think it was like eight, nine, 10 songs we'd written up to that point. And every single song from that point on went in the bin, which, you know, if, if we hadn't written Knives and done that, we would have thought that was madness, but we were so confident with how good Knives were sounding. And we knew that was the song and that was the catalyst then to, um, to continue on writing in that vein and it was just and as we did that the confidence grew in writing heavier music you know because it's hard it's hard to write super heavy music in a way because you don't you don't want it to be kind of you don't want to be too heavy for the sake of just being heavy just because you you know what i mean so we wanted to make sure it was natural we wanted to make sure that the dna of all of my valentine ran straight through it we didn't want to sound like it was a different band uh, and Knives just delivered that. And we just carried that formula through then for every single song we'd written after Knives, you know, and having that confidence to scrap 10 songs and at, at the, you know, at the click of the finger was, was really liberating as well. It just felt really good. It was like, usually that would feel like madness, but we were so happy with, we'd found that direction. That was like, they, they, they've got to go. They're not suitable. And, um, and off we went. And then it just got heavier and heavier. And then like, Parasite came along and like all, it's just like, damn, this is, this is getting pretty intense. You know what I mean? And it just felt good. You know? And like people were like, like you said, people were just beaming, smiling. And it was the complete opposite on gravity. There was a lot of anxiety. There was a lot of trepidation, a lot of kind of conflict. Um, and this one was, was the complete opposite. And it was just such, such a great vibe with, with the guys, you know? Yeah. I think it's interesting what you said about how it's hard to make heavy music. Cause I think, cause heavy music such like an instant thing. Like you hear a riff and you're like, yeah, but it's tough to do that and make it like interesting, if that makes exactly. sense. You can, any band, any rock or metal band can be the heaviest thing in the world if they want to be, but it's like, there's still, you still have to make it 
like listenable and creative and, and inspiring and and who you are like bull of my valentine you know we, we, it's so important that we made sure that this album sounded like us we just wanted to take it to a level which we've never been before and max it out not go over it because we were trying to make a point or a statement because of the last record and it's like if we do that that's what people are going to assume immediately you know so we were very much aware that we needed we wanted to take it up to number take it up to 10 and no further <laughs> so and i think i think i think mission accomplished you know i don't think we could have got heavier without just sounding ridiculously unnecessary yeah it's the thing where it comes a little bit like a parody yes exactly yeah um i mean where did the kind of the aggression come from on this record it, it came it came from a really happy positive place it was just that kind of excitement mm -hmm. and like and i don't know it was, yeah excitement and like we, we knew we'd hit upon the direction which and that just gives you so much confidence you know and i think coming off the back of gravity as well having starving ourselves for nearly four or five years of writing in a certain technical way we just had a lot to give you know and um yeah so the aggression just came from being confident to be back in a place where it was as heavy and aggressive and that was it really i mean you know on tracks like parasites or bastards like did you have people in mind when you were writing those songs Yes and no. I mean, they they always start off with 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 concept and ideas. You know, what I mean, it's um, it's 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 really tricky writing lyrics for songs when you've got a concept and not make them sound as if you're trying to talk about someone and stuff. You know, it's 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 a difficult kind of balance. But um, so they're more concepts about things that have that have gone on in the past, in the present, things in the future with 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 people that you've had relationships with or acquaintances with and stuff like that so yeah i mean and the parasite one was obviously a slight the word slightly influenced by the times we were living in um and yeah so yes and no in, in the short answer <laughs> yeah i mean so they're not sort of political songs or kind of aimed at that sort of side of the I world mean, bastards was more more so than i ever have been before you know but i, I didn't want it to be a song which kind of came across that way because I'm, you know, I've never been that kind of lyricist. We've never been that kind of band. And again, it was just kind of, it was born, a, like the concept was born about just the kind of the times we were living in yeah. and what was what was going on in, in, in this country, especially and having to see what was going on day to day and just kind of, just like in dismay of, of, of how badly things were being taken care of for us, you know? And um, so it, it, it's, a, it's a dig, it's a dig. But I try to make it as, uh, as, as lyrical and as creative as possible <laughs> rather than just like a pointy finger fuck you yeah you know? I, I think like i think a lot of people who have never really dealt in politics before that whole time period you kind of you kind of had to because it yeah was... it, it's difficult not to because it's, it's you know <laughs> it's, it's a time that you know we've had to live through unfortunately and hopefully we won't have to uh, to that level of extremity again yeah. um but yeah i mean you know writing and recording an album during that whole period of time it's going to creep in yeah. a couple of times you know and it would be kind of silly not to we didn't want to make an album all about that and we didn't but but yeah bastard is definitely a nod to to the times we've been living in in the last year and a half you know do you kind of feel like the world needs sort of that sort of angry aggressive music right now i think it does but i think it's always kind of i always i've always taken angry aggressive music and always had and always listened to it and in a really positive way it's always had a really positive impact on my life you know even if it's going to a show and you like going to shows when i was a kid to like you know really heavy bands like machine head and sepultura and stuff like that which is bands that i grew up on going to see them in wells it was always like super intense music super aggressive performances but you're in a mosh pit with thousands of other people just enjoying themselves and letting go of this aggression in a really positive un unified kind of way with everyone else around you you know so I've always seen aggressive music as a really positive outlet for me. And, you know, on the record, you've also got songs like Can't Escape the Waves and Shatter, which kind of feel much more personal than perhaps mm. you've ever kind of really gone before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, a, a lot of the stuff like Shatter, Can't Escape the Waves and Rainbow Veins, they're, 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 they're a bit more personal. They're a bit more kind of, I don't know, about me and my introverted ways and, and just kind of dealing with things that I didn't, really experienced until about 2015-16 in my life you know and really kind of dealing with 
it sounds mental saying it every time. I don't know why, but mental health issues, it's because I don't, I never thought it would be something that I would, would deal with. You know, and I still find it difficult to verbally explain to people because I, it, it feels, I don't know, it feels so personal, you know? Um, but I think it's um, it's just taking those experiences and, and again, putting them into song in a really colorful, lyrical way. You know, I haven't, fortunately, haven't experienced some things with my mental health, which has been really, really bad. Um, you know, so I'm thankful for that, but I have had moments and feeling down, that's what gravity was about, you know, it was about a moment in my life where I kind of really felt lost and out of control. Um, and, and songs like Shatter, Rainbow Veins and Can't Escape the Waves are more kind of reflective of that era of my life again, because I felt like I hadn't really said everything I'd wanted to say on gravity. So, so yeah, so, you know, those songs are a lot more personal to me, conceptually. Yeah. Um, and I try to take them as far as I can without again sounding like it's going over the top lyrically um, with things like mental health issues and drug abuse and stuff like that, you know? So, so yeah, so it, you know, it's things I've experienced in my life, but I've tried to, again, turn up the lyrical content up to the max without kind of feeling like I'm kind of being a parody of myself or something like that, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, were there any nerves about kind of going there lyrically? Cause I guess kind of people expect big, heavy songs that are angry at the world, but kind of, big heavy songs that talk about mental health it's not you know it's not so common yeah I, I'm always kind of a bit weary on, on writing stuff that is super personal because it's it's not really something that I've always wanted to share you know yeah. it's like well not with the public anyways you know yeah, it's like cool. within my family and my friends and stuff like that you know, I can fight in them and I have a great group of people around me which will look after me and vice versa like that you know but so to put it out there there's always been something I've a little bit been a little bit kind of skeptical about but then it's like I said, going back to Gravity again, and again, it's such an important record for me. As soon as I learned to be comfortable with that and put it into my music, it was actually a really therapeutic feeling, very liberating feeling. Um, and, and, you know, speaking to people over the last three, four years, whatever it's been since it's been out on tour and just on our message boards and our Patreon page and stuff, the amount of love and, that people have got for that record and the lyrical content and how they relate to it and how it's affected them and how they feel like they're connected to it is amazing. And I think that, again, it's been, it's been a big turning point and learning curve for me, even all these years later that, you know, don't be afraid to to let people in a little bit, you know, because yeah. because everyone, you know, you're actually making, actually doing really positive things here. And what might feel like a personal kind of song about negativity and such stuff I've experienced is actually turning into a really positive experience for someone else because they can relate to it. And music is, is, is the best thing to kind of relieve people's anxieties about stuff like mental health issue, you know, and like everyone's the same, everyone's connected. Um, and yeah, I, I, you know, I've just got that confidence now to um, to say what I kind of feel like I want to say, even if I don't feel like I want to say it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a difficult balance, you know, but yeah, those those songs, if Gravity didn't exist again, those songs probably wouldn't, wouldn't be here as well, because I, I wouldn't have found that being comfortable enough to kind of let it out like that, you know? Yeah, I guess it's that thing where sort of any discomfort you might feel is offset by the positive impact you can have on like. Yeah, yeah. And I, when I was writing those songs, I never, I never assumed it would turn to that. But you know, but hearing all the feedback and seeing people at shows, and it, it, that's the album that comes up all the time, way more than anything in the past. I know how important like Screaming Fire and Poison are to the fan. I, I totally get it. But on a personal level, that's the album which more people have made a point to tell me about personal experiences with them with mental health issues and breakups and stuff like that you know so that's really cool man I feel really proud of that you know amazing I mean what do you kind of hope people get from this record um oh, I just hope they like it enjoy it I hope they smile when they hear it you know it's just um it's, it's a side of the band that's always been present we've just tried to take it up to a level which we wanted to kind of shock and awe that was kind of an expression we used in the studio we want to shock and awe you know we want to come out swinging we want to show people exactly what we're about when we're in this mood you know because like i said these things are snapshots like in a year's time who knows what we might be writing um and yeah we, ju we just we just wanted to show off i think i think that, I think that was a shock and awe and show off you know we kind of resisted on gravity and it just wasn't there so this time around when it was coming out we were like come on let's let's go let's do it let's show people what the band is capable of and um yeah no holds barred version of bullet by valentine 
Um, Because, yeah, there's like a lot of newer metal bands kind of breaking through at the moment with kind of a more electronic or pop influence kind of take on the genre. You know, you've got Code Orange, Ghost, Sleep Token, like those sort of bands. Like, do you think there's still place for like a more, I guess, classic sounding metal band like yourselves and like this record? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a place, you know, I mean, it's. um, I think, you know, we've we've got that luxury of of having a, a, a proper career. You know, so I think there's always going to be room for bullet in, in, in metal music. And there's always room for, we've got to have new, younger, creative bands come in that are pushing the boundaries, developing new sounds and bringing the genre in, in, into a kind of more modern, contemporary way. I think it's essential that that happens, you know. And, but I, you know, I think bands like us who write in a more traditional way and have a more traditional sound, I think, I, I don't think that's ever going to that's ever gonna be a thing that's not going to be in demand, you know. And, um, yeah, so we're lucky. We, I think if, if we were not going to be around, it would have been by now, you know, <laughs> seven albums, man. That's pretty cool. You know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, it's never something that we thought was, was possible in the day. If we got one or two, that was, that was, we would have been happy with that, you know, but to be here nearly 20 years later and just smashed out our seventh record, which is arguably and subjectively our best to date, then things are looking good for us, you know? Yeah, definitely. And on the subject of like newer bands, like obviously you did the download pilot this year, which kind of felt like a real takeover of kind of the new generation. Yeah. Like, did you kind of feel part of that? Did you like, how was that kind of whole experience, you know, apart from just being emotional? Yeah, it was great. You know, to, to be, to be at the top was just, it's just an honor. You know I mean? It's like, we, we, we've been a part of that festival since 2004. It's something that that's always been in, in, in my heart and soul as a metal musician, you know, like Donington and, and Download and all that stuff is just something that was, I don't know, it's just like, it's, 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 the, it's the holy ground, it's the mecca of what we do, you know what I mean? And we've had a, a relationship with, with Andy and the guys that uh, Download since 2004. So to finally get that moment, yes, it wasn't the old singing, all dancing, full capacity version, you know what I mean? But, but still, you know, it's like, for us, that meant the world and it still means the world. And it was just an honor to be part of it because of what it was, but also because, like I said earlier, about what it was actually for and what it symbolised and, and how important it was for it to go to go well. Um, so, yeah, we did feel a responsibility, like we're kind of the, the older dudes are sitting at the top of the bill. Um, but it, it's great, you know, there, there's a lot of amazing talent in this country. And I think it was good, it was finally good to actually showcase a British lineup as well. Like, that's something that's never going to happen again. So that, that whole thing was, um, was something I thought which was, was, was amazing is to showcase what this country has and the diversity between acts was, was phenomenal. You know, there was so much different sounds and, and colors and, and, and weirdness and traditionalness and contemporary sound. It was great. It was just this huge cauldron and melting pot of, of British rock alternative metal bands. It was phenomenal and good on it. Cause you know, it's an exciting time for British alternative rock music, you know? Yeah, I mean, are there any bands in particular that are really exciting you at the moment? I mean, there, there, there's a couple. I think, I think, I think the quirkier the better. I think Wargasm are like, you know, what I mean, it's, it's it's unusual. I'm not really a fan of, of stuff like that traditionally, but the more you delve into it and the more you see it, especially in in a in a live environment, you know, what I mean, that that's when these things click. You know, what I mean, and that's when you could see like the reaction they're getting, like with the with the younger generation and how important it is for that generation. They're connecting with this new generation. It's just like. It's just this whole cycle of of, um, of talent and music and, and genres, and it's great to see, you know, and you know, p- people pushing boundaries and being different and unique is is essential for for things to progress, you know. Incredible. Um, do you feel like you're kind of recognised as one of the biggest metal bands around? Um, it's not something I feel or think about, but mm-hmm. I, I think as far as the name goes and the history and, and what we've achieved and where we are, yeah, I, I think I think we're up there. I think I think we're up there, you know. Yeah, because like you've you know surpassed a billion streams in the US. Like, does that do those sort of metrics mean anything for you? Um, they they don't like mean anything as much, but it's it's good to, it's good to kind of know that the band is really still relevant and important to a lot of people, and that and that's what's more exciting for me. It's not the numbers, it's 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 just the amount of people that still kind of count us as an important band. Yeah, I think I think that's what I really strive for. I think it's really important that we're still relevant and there's still an appetite for the band, regardless of the historical successes. You know that that's done. That's history. We're not we're not we don't care about that shit. You know we're focused on the future. And I think um, 
I don't know, being given opportunities and having a huge loyal global fan base for us is 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 is, is incredible, you know. And I, I think there's I think there's better to come. I don't think we're anywhere near our peak as a live band and as as songwriters. So, you know, as long as we feel that way and we're still motivated to do that, I think we're going to be around a long, long time. Amazing, yeah. Because you know, you said you still got like six songs ready to go that aren't on the record. Like, are they yeah. similar to what's in the self-titled? Are they another departure? Like, they're 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 they're, they're part of the same writing and recording song uh, process. Some of them are quite different and unique. We didn't want to put them on because they were too curveball-y. Sure. Um, but they were curveball enough to have a spotlight on them post-album, you know? So we wanted the album to be a really solid, cohesive body of work from front to back. And we wanted to, didn't want to throw too many creative curveballs in the album. We thought it was actually better to keep them off as standalone singles post-record and maybe have some kind of really crazy EP, maybe at the end of the cycle, just so people can hear them. Um, so they get the light of day. But yeah, they're heavy. They're interesting, they, they're, they're pushing boundaries, um, and they're super exciting. So, yeah, yeah. It's like Gravity and the self title they feel like two extremes of the band. Yeah. Like, do you think going forward, you'll kind of try and find like a, a middle ground between that, or do you think you'll keep trying to, you know, push boundaries and go into kind of new surprising directions? Yeah. I, I think it, it really depends on, on, on what the, like, you know, in a year's, two years time, whenever we decide to kind of get involved with that, we're just going to do what we do. We're going to see what comes out, what feels natural, what makes us happy, what makes us scared, what makes us motivated. And, you know, coming off the back of Gravity on this album, we're just going to take that whole process of, of confidence and no fear attitude into the writing process. And as soon as we start smiling and high-fiving, that's when we'll know we're on the right track, you know? How ambitious are you, kind of in terms of the band and what you can achieve? Oh, always, man. I think that it's a huge part of us being where we are today is, is everyone in this band is super ambitious. You know? And, you know, we we only want to be the best that we can be. You know, we're not under any illusion that we're going to be playing Wembley Stadium anytime soon. You know, it's, it's not that kind of confidence. It's more, you know, we, we still have things that we want to achieve. You know, we still want to be at the top of the bill and on UK and European rock festivals, all of them. We still want to, you know, we, we've got a lot of things that we, we want to achieve and that just keeps us motivated and it keeps us hungry. And um, I, think, I think that's a good thing to have. As soon as you lose that, it's going to be hard to kind of find that energy to put your, your heart and soul into a process of making a record because it's a fucking process, especially when you've got conflict and, and people creatively not on the same page. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a process. But as long as everyone stays hungry, then those, that, that kind of conflict actually creates beautiful things sometimes. Amazing. So, yeah, when you're doing the download pilot, were you like... We're going to come back and do this properly. Like, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, man. You know, we've got a taste for it. We've got hunger for it. We know we're capable of it. Yeah. We absolutely know we're capable of it. But, you know, it's just given us, it's just being able to have those opportunities. Um, and I think just being patient is the key to that. Because there's no way there's certain bands that are going anywhere anytime soon, you know, and there's no way that we would be above them on, on lineups. And we know that. We're not stupid. It's, it's totally cool. So I think for us, it's, it's, just, it's just delivering the best version of us that we can um becoming a better live act every single tour we do and just staying hungry and motivated to, to be the band that is at the top of those those posters and what's going next for you guys uh european tour end of january all of february not really confident that's going to happen especially with today's announcement in austria and all that kind of stuff you know it's like oh man so we're not we're not hoping on that but we've got a really really kind of big summer run coming up summer festivals which are announcing daily um hopefully getting over to asia soon hopefully getting over to the states by the spring and summer as well um and just taking it day by day really that the world is a, a forever changing place for, a, for a, a touring musician right now so we're just kind of doing what we can and hoping for the best really I mean, how, how important is live for this sort of record oh it's essential it's all about the it's all about the energy it's all about the connection it's all about the pumping of the fists, the crowd surfing, it's, um, you know, it, it's that kind of, it, it's the kind of record that you, you need to hear live to understand it better, you know. There's one thing hearing it and headphones are on some kind of Bluetooth speaker system in your front room, but there's no substitute for it being on a stage in front of 10,000 people, you know. It's uh, it's the type of, it's got so much energy and attitude that it, need, it needs to be played and listened to in a live environment. Amazing, man. I look forward to it. Um, well, I'll let you get on, but thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. No problem at all, man. Absolute pleasure. 
um, yeah, look after yourself, stay safe, and uh, yeah, look <laughs> have fun with your dog. Thanks, man. Yeah, here he is. Say bye, Max. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>